Hello, everybody, and welcome to Commodity Culture, where we break down the commodity space for both new and experienced investors. My name is Jesse Day. As always, standard disclaimer, nothing here is investing advice. Do your own due diligence. And today's guest is the CEO of Kumbaya Gold, a company that aims to consolidate gold reserves through exploration and acquisition of mining properties in Antioquia, Colombia. Alexander Boivin, it's great to have you on the show. Yes. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, it's an honor to have you on. And like I do with all new guests, I like to start with the origin story. So tell us how you first discovered gold and precious metals and how that led you to becoming the CEO of Kumbaya Gold. Yeah, it's a good question. It's always interesting to see uh, where we come from, huh? because sometimes we never know where, where we're going to end. So uh, I started as a trader in the precious metals, I was trading the futures in the silver, uh, the silver contracts. And uh, I remember it was kind of the, the moment uh, in 2010 where, where we see started the quantitative easing. So we saw the silver go until 50, go back 26. That was a nice support at 26. So I was trading that. And uh, at one point I received an invitation to invest, uh, in the mining space, in exploration, in Colombia, in an area named California. We name it California Valley. It's northeast of Medellin in Colombia. So in 2010-11, I started to invest. Uh, there were many companies all in the same place, drilling, exploring. So we know Bentanagal, very successful story. Uh, Galway Resources, Calvistago. So A.K. Batista, a Brazilian billionaire, arrived in 2012 and bought everything for $2 billion Canadian. So we, all the investors made money. It was an amazing time. And uh, I said, OK, uh, let's try to, to learn how to do uh, exploration and build uh, mining companies. So in 2013, I went by myself in Colombia and uh, uh, I started to look for some projects. Uh, learning Spanish, very important in Colombia. And uh, so I, I did very nice thing, but also a lot of mistakes. And I believe in life when you do mistakes and you learn from it, you just grow and you're better at it after all. So that's what I did for the last decade. And uh, so now I'm the CEO of Kim Biago. So it's 10 years of experience in Colombia and, and also in the mining space, capital market, exploration. Uh, I had the chance to work with some little production also. So I'm kind of knowing a, a lot more about the, the, the gold, silver, and now copper because everybody's talking about copper. So Colombia, it's an amazing country. Uh, and I will tell you something on the geological standpoint, it's kind of amazing because there is a lot to do there. And I don't know if it's because it was kind of hard for the, let's say, 20 years ago, you know, in the last 30 years before, kind of civil war or very more unsafe place. But now today, I'm seeing it, like if I compare it to Peru, Chile, the same Cordillera is coming north. There is so many things to do. I mean, the technical and geological opportunity there is just amazing. And it's, it's like, I will say, I don't know how many years back from Peru or there's so it, it's coming there and uh, I'm very excited to be part of that country in the exploration uh, uh, because I think there is a lot of potential for the future. Well I definitely want to dive into the company later but first I want to start with a broader macro question concerning gold and that is as we sit here today what are the main catalysts the main tailwinds that you currently see working in gold's favor? I'm very excited about gold because I will say something with, with, with the economy that we, we are seeing right now, like you look at the S&P 500, still high, still continue, is following its trend, let's say for now. And we're looking at interest rate. Me, I always look at interest rate and, and the, the power of the dollar. And because, you know, in the gold and commodities, you have the nominal price and the real price. And to see that interest rate is going higher and higher because of the inflation and the goal is not going down, that gives me a really good sign 
for the potential of the new future. Because normally when interest rate going higher, gold should go lower and kind of a pressure on it. And we're not seeing it right now. So in my perception, I don't have a crystal ball, but let's say they stop to raise interest rate at one point or they do quantitative easing, so they bring it lower in the near future, it will definitely help the price of gold to go higher. And I mean, I'm looking all around and I'm seeing houses, price of houses going higher, stock market going higher, everything is going higher. I think we didn't see the, the all the upside potential in the precious metal for now. I, I don't think we haven't seen it. And, and it, it's coming, but nobody knows exactly when. Yeah, obviously timing the market is basically impossible. Nobody knows exactly when you're right, but it does seem like a lot of the catalysts you mentioned are coming together. I wonder how much validity you give to the BRICS nation supposedly creating a gold-backed currency. This is something that's been in the headlines recently. On the extreme end, the gold bugs are saying it's going to be de-dollarization. This is the death of the dollar. This new currency is going to come out. It's going to be backed by gold. Um, and it's going to take over. And other people are saying, well, wait a minute, is it redeemable for gold? Because that's kind of the important question. It's one thing to have a ledger that says, oh, we have this much gold in storage and then assign assign this new currency unit based on that. But if it's not redeemable for gold, doesn't that kind of go back to the problem we're in in the first place? So I'm wondering how you see this BRICS currency playing out. Obviously, we don't have all the information right now. But do you think it could have an impact on both international trade and perhaps the gold price as well? Yes, of course. I mean, I've been following the, this project and this idea for the BRICS for many years. And, and I think it's a, it's a good idea for them. I mean, for they, they can trade between, between them. And, and I mean, it's going to help them and not to be, let's say, uh, ju just need the dollar. Uh, but I, I, at the end, like, if they do it and it's backed by gold, it will be good for gold because they will need gold to back it. And if they become a competition for the U.S. dollar, it means that the U.S. dollar should go down and it will be good for gold too. So me, board scenario are very good. Uh, I, I was listening to, to a guy, uh, Frank Justra, a very nice guy and very intelligent that, that is in Iris Mining, also in Colombia and a neighbor of our project. But uh, he's talking very intelligently, like he's saying, it's all probabilities, right? And uh, I'm thinking, uh, I mean, it, it's my answer, but it's not really my answer. It's his answer. But he, he's saying that even if the bricks come in, I mean, for sure, the dollar will still be a strong currency. And, and if you look maybe at you and me, Jesse, like if, for example, we live in the United States, we will still use U.S. dollar. And, and if we want to buy a house there and, and have a lifestyle there, we, we will still use U.S. dollar. And it's a very strong economy and, and, and rich people. So I would say that it can be, let's say, uh, another option. but I don't think it will replace the, the U.S. dollar. And I think in both scenarios, it will be good for gold. So that, that's what I like about, about the, the scenario. Well, I want to talk about central bank gold buying because it's been accelerating massively with 228 tons purchased in Q1 of this year. Now that smashes the previous Q1 record from back in 2013 by 34 so why do you think central banks are buying so much gold? Do you think it could be linked to the BRICS currency at all? Like they're preparing to have gold? Because we're seeing not only BRICS countries, but non-BRICS countries like Singapore and, and several others also accumulating gold. So what do you think the reason is behind it? Do you see it continuing? Yeah, for, for sure they have, a, they have a goal and they have a vision. They are not buying gold for nothing. So if I keep it simple... My perception, it's one option can be because they think gold will go high and it's a good, uh, let's say, investment for them. A and the second option, it's because they have a, a, a vision and, and maybe they want to back like the new currency, let's say, BRICS. Uh, because 
e- e- even this country, they, they, they have a lot of dollars, right, uh, in, in their portfolio. And, and they, they still, for the moment, they still believe more in the dollar currency than, than uh, in their proper currency. So maybe to accumulate gold, uh, like I'm saying, I'm repeating myself, but I don't have a crystal ball, but I- I'm seeing two things. It, it, because they think it will go higher and it's a good investment. I think so too. And, and the second thing, may- maybe they want to use gold to, to build an instrument or, or, or tool uh, that, that can help us in the future. Uh, and definitively it will be for the banking system or currency, because at the end, uh, uh, that that that's what they are looking to 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 do. Uh, the the BRICS, uh, the countries and others countries that they want to get in that, and that will help them uh, with the let's say their their trades between countries. If they don't have to use the dollar and they they have their own currency, uh, it will help them for sure in the future. But at the end, uh, goal. Uh, we never know. Nobody knows, but uh, it's looking good for, for the next few years. Yeah, well, speaking of the banking system, we did see a banking crisis that now media headlines seem to have moved on from. You know, the, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank. These were actually huge bank failures. And obviously, they sent shockwaves through the financial system. The Fed stepped in with a solution. Now it remains to be seen how effective that's going to be over the long run. But do you think it's over and done with? Does the Fed have this under control? Do you think we could see more cracks appearing in the financial and the banking system? And do you think this kind of points to why gold is so important as an instrument to store wealth outside of the traditional financial system? Very good question. Very good question, Jesse. Yeah, I think we will always see businesses or bank doing bankruptcy. Like Warren Buffett is saying, you, you see the real people when the, I don't know the exact expression, when the tide... Yeah, when the tide is out, you see who's swimming naked, yeah. Exactly. I think, uh, let's say if we look at the last decade, it was a zero interest decade, like everybody did invest a lot in, in technology too. Uh, it was a nice ride. Uh, it was very good. And now that we're seeing the interest rate going higher, but there is a lot of businesses that they were there with a vision and speculation, but without a real asset or a real revenue. So at the end, if you did finance uh, healthy, you're good. But uh, a lot of, let's say, uh, money was used to, to invest in a risky, uh, risky places. And that gave, gave a lot of upside. But now that the interest rate are coming back, you, I think we will see bankruptcy or consolidation uh, for sure. And, and that, that always exists uh, since the world <laughs> exists. So we will see it again. And, and it's never the end. It's only an opportunity. Uh, crisis, it's only a word. Uh, people use it. To, to be scared or recession, but, but it's only tools. The, the power of the words, me, uh, I, I use that always in my life. It's, it's an opportunity for investors to have a, to get in a, 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 in a market or, or everything. And, and so we will see it again. And, uh, and I think the Fed at the end will always protect his country and his banking system. So the, they will do something, they will print money, they will help, they will consolidate bank, whatever they need to do. But it, it never, I, I don't think we will see a, a apocalypse, no? <laughs> Even in 2008, I remember everybody was saying, it's over, and it will never come back, it will never be the same. And today... Trust me, <laughs> it's worse than before. I mean, I never seen so many cash everywhere, and, and I mean, the market are very higher. I, I remember the S and P five hundred went what to to five hundred, six hundred uh, points. Like today, it's forty five hundred. I mean, it always come back. So never be scared. When everybody's scared, it's an opportunity to buy or to make a good position. And uh, I mean, me. 
I, I'm waiting for 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 the, when, when it's a cheap cheap market to to enter. So we never know. Like you're saying, that nobody knows it's the market, but uh, for sure we'll see uh, with the interest rate right now. I mean, we have to let time to let time to people to renew their mortgage or to renew their credit and, and their loan and their bonds to see the real impact on the market. And I think we, I think we, we, did, we don't see it yet exactly. Uh, and we have to let time a little to see the adjustment and uh, we'll see it. And hopefully it will be good for gold. And do you think it's important for investors to have some allocation to physical gold as a way of storing their wealth outside the banking system? Because obviously we saw those issues, the the depositors were all made whole, nobody lost their money. But you know, you see what's happening in some other countries, Lebanon, for example, um, where banks have completely shut down, people are robbing banks to get their own money out. That's a very extreme example. But you know, there's this hubris in the West that it can't happen here. I would say nothing's impossible. I would also point to situations in the UK like Nigel Farage and other people being debanked and denied access to banks because of their political views. So do you think it makes sense for the the average citizen to have some physical gold just to protect themselves in those corner case scenarios? I think like you're saying, Jesse, it depends where you're located. I think if you're in US, UK or even Canada, you, you have some insurance huh, by the government if for any reason the banking system or your broker account is not working or you have an insurance. I think in Canada it's $1 million. I don't exactly know the number in US. But I think if you're in that type of country, you don't really need it because to have physical gold first, you can put it at your place. Hopefully it's not a lot of money. <laughs> because you never know who can come to your place. And if you have to storage, uh, you have fees attached to that. And, and I think with uh, so many people like uh, Ray Dalio, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, name it, name it. Uh, I think we, ha- we have access to cheap ETF uh, with gold. And I mean... In that type of country, you're okay. But if you're in Lebanon, definitely like try to open a, a bank account or a broker account in the US. I think it's the easiest way and it's very cheap. And, and uh, But for other type of people, like with a lot of money and, and very diversified, I think it's worth it to have gold. And also, me, I always have gold in my in my in my portfolio because people sometimes say yeah but i don't receive a dividend or i i I don't see the growth like very sexy but if you use gold like an insurance if the market crash or if you see some opportunity going down your goal is always like support more and you can sell your goal at this moment to to bring it back in your portfolio so me that's how i use gold I put always in gold, but when an opportunity come back, because you, you never know wh- when it's going to move. And, and, and I'm using gold to not only to, to keep it, but to use it when it's a good time to enter. And when it's high, I, I'm putting in gold and, and rebalance. Eh? Re- Red Alu explained it very well in this, uh, in his book. Uh, but uh, I, at the end, I think it's an expensive, Let's say for everybody, it's an expensive process to have physical goal or risky. Depends on the amount, but it's always it, it, for sure to have physical gold or physical silver. No, no, nothing can can beat that. No, it's it's there. So no risk. Yeah, absolutely. I want to uh, pivot to Kumbaya Gold now. And for those who aren't familiar, maybe you could start with giving us an overview of the company and your properties in Colombia. Yeah, thank you. So Kimbaya, we're building the next big exploration company in Colombia. We have an amazing team with specific experience that help us to navigate in the mining space over there. And our, our flagship project, which is named Tahami, it's located 
uh, northeast of Medellin, so Segovia Mining District. It's well known for high-grade gold, uh, like Iris Mining is there, 15 grams per ton producing, uh, and it's an international district. Everybody knows about it, and uh, we're surrounded by many producers. Their, produ their production, it's around 300,000 ounces of gold yearly. So at the price of today, it's 600 million sales. So that, that what's around us in, in Colombia with the Tahami project. And uh, we are all, we have three projects, Burio, Tahami, and uh, Maitamak. We are all located in uh, Antioquia. Antioquia, it's a well advanced uh, uh, department in Colombia for mining and the infrastructure is amazing it's very secure so we're all located in this uh, in this area and it's close to Medellin Medellin you have Bogota the capital and Medellin is the second biggest uh, city in, in Colombia and uh, so it's it's very easy to travel to go to the project to come back in the city etc so so that that's uh, can buy a goal uh, about the project and uh, we're looking for a goal uh, we are an early stage exploration company, but with really nice asset. I mean, the neighbors are, has already proven that it's working. And, and with, because it's high grade gold also, it's very interesting because the price of the gold doesn't affect us like a, a low grade gold, like an open pit. Uh, like I, I was saying, uh, Iris Mining, we're neighbor to Iris Mining in Segovia. And the reserve for the next year, they are looking to produce 210,000 ounces of gold at 15 grams per ton. So it's very, very amazing. On our property, we already have historical mines, artisanal mines. So we know there is gold. We just don't know how much. So what, what I like also about Kimbaya Gold, it's a, it's a brand new company. Uh, we, we have 15 million shares out. Uh, we didn't start promotion yet. Uh, we, we, we have built a real good asset. We have an amazing team. You can go see on our website, kimbayagold.com. I mean, we have Jean Depatsy sold the project for $4.3 billion. He's on, he's on our advisory board. We, we have a, an amazing board with experience. And, and uh, I mean, uh, the, the, at the end, what I really like about Kimbaya Gold, it's, it's brand new. So we're just starting and, uh, and we will go drill. So because we'll go drill, it's always good to be there before it's happening because we're always at one drill hole to, to be a company maker. And, and so, so that, that's Kimbaya Gold for now. Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into. Antioquia as a jurisdiction. Um, and maybe you could provide some color on your relationship with the local government and community and what makes it such a great jurisdiction. Yeah, so Antioquia, what is good? First, we have past, uh, past experience. Like if you look at, at the Continental Gold, was a 7 million market cap, sold for 1.9 billion, was in Antioquia. Uh, we're seeing also in Antioquia, you have the two, the, the Cordillera, the big fault are passing by Antioquia and, and it's well developed. So AZ access and, and um, it's well known for mining in Antioquia. The majority of all the mining company are not in Bogota or in the, in, in Medellin. And uh, so that, that's a, a good department and our three projects. So one is northeast of, of, uh, Medellin, Tahami project. One is south two hours and a half from Medellin. It's Maitamak project. And one is East Burial project. It's uh, two, two hours east. So very easy access from, from uh, Antioquia. And the community is used to have mining. So we're not reinventing anything. There is a lot of small scale miners, big companies. Also, that they are working there, so it's kind of in the culture, and and, um, and I mean the government 
they really are helpful to to move project forward because it, it's helping everybody in, in the area. So it, it's it's a nice jurisdiction in Colombia. I mean, it's my favorite one for sure. That's why we're there. So you have plans to complete a new acquisition this year. Could you provide some color on those plans, some details on this acquisition? Yes, of course. Uh, this acquisition is very interesting because. I already spoke about it, but there is two new projects in. Uh, also, we will have new partners in, and a, and a technology also, because uh, so we bought two projects: Tahami project in Segovia. It's around six thousand hectares. We have uh, Maitamac project uh, in Abeoral, two hours south of Medellin. It's twenty six thousand hectares. Boat project, high grade gold, a lot of potential. Uh, and uh, in the team, we, we did, to make the acquisition, we make uh, we issue shares, 10, 10 million shares. So it will be a school for 24 months and they will be part of the shareholder, uh, shareholders. And uh, that, that said, the, the new people that they're coming with the transaction uh, one has a technology, and so all in Colombia, we, we know where are the deposit and, and the, the ge geological information. And with his system, is the first, the, the fastest one in Colombia to claim. So if for any reason an area is free, he can claim it is the fastest one in Colombia. So he's a big shareholder in uh, in Kimbaya at post transaction. And uh, so amazing team, very good project with a good, good upside. Uh, we already know a lot of information, historical information. We're working on the development to uh, an upcoming exploration campaign and a very tight flow. Very, very, uh, the capital structure is amazing, highly held and, and brand new uh, on the market. So all that, everything is a timing uh, in life. So. All that in line, uh, uh, I'm very excited about the next steps. So management and board hold around 56% of the outstanding shares, which is a massive amount of skin in the game. Could you talk about how those shares were acquired and why you think it's important to have such a large insider ownership? Yeah. So this is like, like I said, uh, I was there before. It's been a decade now. I have seen stock and companies work, like I said, like uh, Bentanago, where it was an IPO at $1, went down to $0.10. Nine months later, thirteen sixty, all by bought in cash. And we have seen uh, uh, Continental Gold also went up for $10 a share after, uh, after drilling. So us, our, our group, of people or director management were highly invested. So we started like everybody, we bought an asset, we raised money, we we, we, we listed, we did a non-offering IPO on a CSC. So it, it's all friends and family right now. It, it was kind of a private company listed. Now we did that acquisition. We're waiting for the NI42101. We're waiting for the shareholder approval and the exchange approval. And that should happen in the next few weeks. And after that, we're, we're looking to list uh, on the OTC QB. And, and we, we will start also the, the exploration campaign. So that said, we're very high and highly invested because first, we have seen it before. Second, we believe in what we're doing and we really like to control our boat to, to respect our values and our vision and, and because at the end, uh, Kimbaya Gold is building a portfolio, is doing exploration, but also we need to build a product for somebody else. Uh, because at the end, the main goal is to sell the company or our project uh, for, for someone to mine it. Us, we're, we're focusing on exploration. And, and uh, I, I'm not surprised that I will see, uh, our, let's say, our, our director or management team buying more shares on the way up. and uh, because. At the end, for now, for the moment, mining, it's, it's hot, but it, it's still very soft market, very, very soft. And, and 
I mean, for me personally, it's the time to invest in mining and accumulate a position. And I prefer to do it in my company that I control and I can, we can work in team and building something that I invest in other company too. But I mean, my main, main investment, it's in Kimbiago and, uh, and that's why we're all invested. We're all on the same page and we know what we're doing. We have seen it before. The, the team, as like, like I said before, we have people in our team that have built mines and sold it. And uh, that's exactly what we want to do. So let, let, let's keep uh, highly invested in this company. And because we're at the beginning only, it, it's really, it, it's it's not all the opportunity that we can we see so many companies that they are recycling uh, asset. So a company try to do that and it's not working. So they, they bring it back. Another company try it. Us, it's it's kind of brand new, already historical mines, ready to drill soon. I mean, and one drill hole can change everything. And maybe we, we're never going to see the price uh, at this price again. We, we never know. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Alexander. I will put a link to Kumbaya Gold in the description below for people who want to check it out. Before I let you go, do you have any final words you want to say about the company? Yeah, but uh, please go follow us uh, on uh, on uh, we are on LinkedIn, Kimbaya Gold. We are on uh, on the Twitter, Kimbaya Gold Two. You can go on our website www.kimbayagold.com. You can subscribe to our mailing list. Uh, because we are uh, we have an upcoming uh, exploration campaign so it will be good to to stay to stay tuned uh, on the next development well great thank you once again for joining us alexander sharing all your knowledge about both gold and kimbaya with the audience thank you very much jesse speak soon commodity culture is a series on commodities and natural resources if you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always up to date with the latest episodes.